Hello and welcome to the show. Nice to have your company. Coming up, we'll be looking at what's making waves in legal circles this week with the Australian's legal editor, Chris Merritt. But first off for you, uh, it goes without saying, mining as we speak is going through plenty of turbulence. Costs fall are rising, margins are being crimped, begging the question, just where to next? Well, Robert Milbourne is a partner at KNL Gates. Uh, and a, a mining law specialist, not just domestically, but uh, beyond borders. He's in Melbourne this week, uh, speaking at the International Mining and Resource Conference. Uh, he checked in with me just earlier on developments in global mining and also his perspective on key players in the sector. When we hear the doom and gloom in the news about uh, BHP or Rio or Vale or um, the majors in general, uh, they're, they're doing well, as, you, as we know, uh, even though they're retracting and they're, they're dealing with a very high um, uh, productivity cost in Australia. Uh, their ability to deflect that by investing internationally is, um, is certainly still present. And I, I would say that while we have a, a negative sentiment in Australia, the opportunities internationally remain quite strong. And uh, what I hear from my clients is uh, a readjustment of the exchange rate down will, will certainly uh, benefit them quite substantially. So the sentiment that I have from my clients is uh, that the, 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 we're, we're, we're bouncing near the bottom, if not already past it. And uh, the opportunity for growth is really quite, quite promising um, to, to acquire assets uh, at a price that was unimaginable two or three years ago. Just as a sidebar to that, but related, having been in Africa, the first ever, what, mining law conference, where are they at on the continuum when it comes to a body of law that is looking relatively settled, so you have that confidence uh, and that certainty uh, alongside the deal flow to kind of just fall back on if things do, heaven forbid, turn pear-shaped? How, how sophisticated is the setup looking? Well, you're right, Carson. I, I was um, uh, uh, involved in a, the first... Uh, a conference of the International Bar Association focusing on mining law throughout Africa. And the intent of that conference was really to bring about um, uh, emerging best practice at, the, uh, at each uh, uh, country level within Africa so that there's not a race to the bottom, but there's some um, adequate uh, safeguards from an environmental, social uh, uh, standard for developing world-class assets uh, uh, throughout the continent. And, and I, I must say the activity level in Africa is, is quite high and the optimism is very, very strong. Uh, capacity building is still a challenge within the ministries. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, as you know, I'm, I'm here in Melbourne uh, uh, to speak at the, um, at the first uh, International Mining and Resources Conference. Uh, there's a mining ministerial summit on that's looking at the same issue. Uh, trying to bring about uh, standardized approaches to best practice in, in regulation and governance of, of mining projects around the world. Now, as part of that conference, the theme of M&A will be writ large, uh, and alongside it, one suspects uh, this, this tussle as to where the capex is apportioned. Uh, give me an overview as to you know, the environment there, because the talk seems forever to be one of cutting back, focusing on the core, uh, and sidelining everything else. Is that, is that consistent with what you're hearing? Look, I, I think uh, there is uh, a variety of opinions about where we sit on the cycle, you know, at the end of the super cycle, start of a new, new cycle. Uh, where do we sit in the, in, the, in the cost curve for coal or iron ore, copper? Um, you'll have different opinions, and, and because of that divergence, you're seeing majors divesting. Obviously, BHP's a, a, a major announcement for its divestiture, uh, and you've got a, a variety of other major players uh, letting assets uh, go that years ago they would have paid premiums for. And, and yet you have uh, a number of new sources of capital out of China, out of India, uh, and now increasingly out of the United States looking to acquire because uh, by historic multiples, we, by historic uh, perspective, the multiples right now are quite low, and the opportunity to acquire is, is, is very real. So uh, the sentiment, I think, is mixed. Uh, there's, a, there's a positive aspect to the market, and there are still those bears that are seeing this as a, 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 something we're going to have to go through for a, a continued period of time. No one really is able to call it uh, at the moment, and, and so I think you'll see a lot of uh, volatility in the market.
Robert, your, your focus pretty much without exception is mining international law. When it comes to some concrete developments and, and progressive ones uh, that you've observed, I guess, in the last uh, eight, nine months, where are we at when it comes to transparency on disclosing revenue and how does that mesh? Because you know, we're really talking in the wake of, of a G20 summit where a lot of the talk was about tax shifting and clamping down on that. Can you see some parallels the way the mining industry is going to have to face up to that and maybe fess up to it? Yeah, look, there, there is a, um, a significant movement uh, that now has over 30 countries uh, signatories to um, uh, a, 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 this movement called the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, EITI. In fact, last year uh, there was an EITI conference held in Australia that gain, uh, gained significant traction among um, new, new countries, for example, Myanmar. Uh, that are looking to amend their national legislation. Australia has been part of a pilot, PNG as well, looking to uh, ensure that all stakeholders have a clear understanding of what uh, monies are being spent uh, on projects, how much of that is revenue to the state, and how is the state accounting for uh, the revenues it gets from resource projects. So you have a, a matching of the books in effect. The government discloses what it gets from each project and the mining companies have to disclose exactly what they pay. And the result of this is an, an opportunity in effect for civil society to understand the consequences of mining projects and for others to realize the, the true benefits that mining projects bring to uh, national revenue. At the same time, um, Carson, we're seeing an increased uh, level of activity uh, with respect to, uh, I would say, the U.S. Uh, leadership in cracking down on corruption in, in the mining sector. So while the EITI process is looking for transparency and accountability and mandating that, uh, there is uh, equally in, uh, kind of a strong fo focus on investigation and holding um, uh, parties accountable where there has been uh, illicit behavior in major mining projects, and that is in Africa and in, in Asia. Uh, South America. So the, this EITI process is one hand. On the other hand, the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act enforcement actions by the U.S. Uh, government, the Department of Justice and the SEC has been uh, probably the other major development that I would have seen in mining around the world. Robert, time is against us. Really briefly, if I could, from you. I know you've recently joined King, uh, k and Gates, rather, so congratulations on that score. You're talking about the U.S. Here it is, uh, based there, but, you know, goes well beyond borders. A brief thought on the, f the financial integration of that firm, how you contrast yourself with your competitors. Look, k and Gates is really one of the uh, amazing stories uh, in the legal market, in my view. Uh, this firm is now one of the top ten in the world, over 2,000 lawyers, 48 offices around the world, fully financially integrated. And that creates a bit of a, a benefit, I think, for lawyers working within the firm of one very, very strong shared culture, uh, shared incentives, uh, shared um, values. And uh, it, it allows the best lawyer to be put on the right project uh, anywhere in the world. In fact, in my, you know, my very first uh, uh, days within the firm, I was involved in projects in Brazil and obviously in Africa and now in Australia. Uh, we, we, we share one vision and one culture around the world. It is a great firm. You know, we've got 300 lawyers here in Australia uh, in all the major capital cities, and uh, I think you'll be seeing a lot more of this firm as it grows. But most importantly, it, it is a, a, a very, very uh, large U.S. firm, over uh, 1,400 lawyers in the United States, and so the opportunity of being involved in transactions between Australia and, Aust and the United States is something that is quite exciting to me. Hello there at KNL Gates, uh, Robert Milbourne from uh, Brisbane Studio, and of course that conference, international uh, mining conference in uh, Melbourne this week, uh, where Robert was going to attend. Let's now bring across some stories making.